In a life of running, so far I've had the joy of experiencing many different surfaces. Whether it be through English snow during the 500k challenge, the pebbles of a Devonshire beach at Parkrun, or the grey tarmac of a London park whilst trying to break 19 minutes, there remains one surface I've always wanted to run on, but never have, until now. Unlike those just listed, this particular surface is not permanent. It exists only for a short window during the year. I have never run across a lake that has frozen over. So when the opportunity came up, I flew to Switzerland in search of one. I'm Harry Morgan, and you're watching Jog On. As the train glided ever higher into the mountains, the Swiss snowscape stretched out before me. It was time for a run and a spot of German. Hello, Harry here. Ich bin in der Schweiz, um acht Kilometer zu laufen. Hello, Harry here. You find us currently in Switzerland, in San Moritz. As you can see, absolutely glorious scenes, pure white snow, and the glorious backdrop of some mountains behind us. And the object of today is to run eight kilometers at 1,800 meters altitude, which will be interesting for the breathing. But also one of the highlights of the run is to run for the first time ever across a frozen lake. Come on, let's go. The body of water I was heading for was Lake Chamfer, flanked by spectacular mountains. It was odd to think that we wouldn't need to run around it, but instead, simply straight across. As well as a frozen lake crossing, the latter stages of this 8K would see another first, running up a ski slope. Passing a woman who looked like she was ready to go to space, we tracked between trees before the path took us parallel with cross-country skiers. I also tried cross-country skiing for the first time on this trip, which I'll make reference to in this video. As we hit the first hill, the lungs began to burn in the thinner air, but it soon flattened out alongside the piste and started to descend into the valley that contained Lake Chamfer. Digging the teeth of my shoes into the powdery snow. We had a little bit more snow last night, so it means that icy layer has been covered up, which is saving the feet slightly from slipping too much. So We've just crossed this river that actually flows out from underneath that thick sheet of ice that covers the lake that we will actually be running over the top of. Feeling the cold on my fingers, a fresh bank of snow invited a quick message and the path turned somewhat more treacherous with a sheet of slippery translucent ice beneath the trail shoes. You can really feel the wind whipping across, a wind that bites and sort of chaps the lips. But at the same time, you're faced with glorious sunshine and blue skies. With the afternoon wind blowing, I followed the river to where all of a sudden the water totally changed. My foot has just slightly sunk but I had to pause for a moment just to admire the crystal clear water of this lake and the way it all of a sudden just dramatically changes this large sweeping sheet of snow and ice that then stretches out towards the base of that mountain completely unbroken and now it's our turn to run across it. This was the lake I'd been waiting for. A ledge of snow and ice would take me past a horse to the edge of Chamfer. Just next to me you can see the grooves of where the cross-country skis go. So right now skirting the very edge of the lake before swinging off this cross-country skiing piste and onto the lake itself. And here we go. Totally frozen and dusted in snow, I was on the lake. Right now beneath us is a thick layer of ice and I'm sure a very, very cold lake. You can tell from the way that lady was dressed, Sarah Pet's full buff knitted hat. And it's actually quite cold, but of course, when you're running, your body heats up so much that you really do feel slightly impervious to the chill. It's absolutely exhilarating to be running on a Swiss lake right now. There is a small part of your brain still that's like listening for cracking almost. And we've just hit three kilometers. The cross-country skiing style they're doing there is known as skate style. There is also classic style that we've had a go at whilst away here in Switzerland. I've got to tell you, whilst difficult to master, it is absolutely brilliant and great fun. I was heading for the centre of the lake, where a strip of land jutting out created a brief mound that rose out of the water. Of course now, it was frozen solid, but climbing it, I was presented with a superb view of a vast, frozen expanse. I rolled down the other side onto the next section. It's incredible to be so close to the skiers whilst running. It's been wonderful to have a go at cross-country skiing for the first time ever as well whilst out here. It's an odd thought to think that these benches are essentially temporary. Left for long enough as the spring approaches, they would sink were they not removed. Once again, trying to get this shot. I've gone in a little deeply, but as you can see every once in a while, you are separated again. So the area of St. Moritz in Switzerland lies at around about 1800 meters altitude. Whilst this isn't spectacularly high, it does mean when running, you notice that difference in the air, particularly going uphill. And also when you're a weirdo like me and talk to a camera whilst doing it. We're just approaching our turnaround point at the bridge where the lakes connect and it turns into Silver Planner. So passing under this bridge marks almost exactly four kilometers and therefore the halfway mark. And over here, the river flows into, or underneath I should say, another frozen lake known as Silver Planner Lake. Seeing patches like this one behind me where the ice is starting to melt away, it does fill you with a slight sense of trepidation about what we're running on over there. Is it gonna hold us? I've eaten quite a lot of bread whilst out here, so uh, 
I hope so. So we start to loop around and make our way back towards the center of St. Moritz. We're gonna pass an area known as Corvash. What's really surreal though is looking up ahead of you and seeing these white snow-capped mountains. It's like someone stuck a large postcard in front of you against the sky. So as this map shows, we're in St. Moritz. We tracked it down across the frozen lakes. Now we're here. Silver Planner. Well, back on the frozen lake and just testing it ever so slightly with a few harder foot stomps. But uh, seems to be just about holding me up at the moment. Imagine that though. All of a sudden, ah! <laughs> splash of water and I'm gone. That's a 5k at altitude. The highest park run I've ever done. You can see both the lines from skis and the footprints of walkers combining on these routes. I try to really appreciate the uniqueness of the experience of running on a sheet of ice. So the reason that we run on the actual hard bashed piece is even though all out there looks fluffy and lovely, I'll show you now why it's a lot more difficult to run on. It's a lot more effort. Final 100 meters across the frozen lake. But next we've decided to try something a little bit different to try and run for the first time up a ski slope. With a gentleman gliding past, we entered a forested section that led to the base of the ski slope, which I peered up. It was steep, very steep. I dug in with the forefoot and greeted the ascending skier. A simultaneous burner of both calves and lungs, it began to level out. Back across the piste, I paused at the path. That was amazing. Kind of come up past the skier. She was using a technique called the herringbone, where you dig the edges of your skis in, kind of like a reverse snowplow, so an open pizza wedge. It allows you to get up that hill. She said, super. So, super, well done. Keeping a straight face, but actually the lungs were really burning. Let's continue. With path and piste separated by just a step of ice, the cross-country skier and snow runner could briefly be viewed in unison as we hit the seven kilometer mark, just one K to go. Just before finishing, the route went via a piece of history worth mentioning. Just pausing here to talk about one interesting fact, and that is that San Moritz has actually hosted the Winter Olympics twice, 1928 and 1948. And the slope you see behind us is in fact where they hosted the ski jump competition. One of the slightly different aspects of the running across here is you have to watch out for skiers. Not often when running, you have to turn your head and just check for a man flying down on two planks towards you. This is where it gets a little bit tricky, trying to cross the deeper stuff. We've just gone over there to use a sort of cross country style seesaw. And now we have to get through this thick stuff to the path. Here we go. Oh, that was <laughs> oh, we're through, let's go. A final push up the path. And that brings us to the eight kilometer mark. What a glorious run this was through the snow, but particularly over the frozen lakes. If you ever get the chance to run in snow, I highly recommend it. It's absolutely wonderful. I'm Harry Morgan. This is Switzerland. Go for that run or that cross country ski. And this is Jog On. So here we are, day two in the mountains. Beautiful, fresh, unpieced snow. What I'm gonna do here is give you a few safety tips for trying to get out. It's important that when we get stuck in deep snow, we spread the body weight and we crawl back. Let's just uh, see, so we have the accident first. We're stuck, what do we do? If you keep digging, you're gonna go further down. So what you do, roll, spread your weight. Be like the snow and crawl your way to safety. And you're back. You're back to safety, you're on, you're ready to ski again.